see what we have here. Our new co-hosts, three of them, Nanefua, Manefua, and Derefua. Yes, indeed. Oh my goodness. Listen, so Kafi <laughs> said that early on. What are the challenges of single motherhood? That is our conversation for this segment. And we've been joined by a young lady, a mother of these beautiful, cutie, cutie, pretty triplets, <laughs> all girls. Mm -hmm. And she's here to share her story, everything about motherhood, in fact, single motherhood, and how far the journey has been for her. So let me introduce you to Johan Wilson. She is a fashion designer as well. Johan. Hey, Johan, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? Um, we're great. I mean, I, I love the coordination. The pinks. Oh, it's almost so as if we knew <laughs> you guys were going to be wearing pink and yeah. purple and your own point. Yeah. Hey, buddy. So these are, your, these are your, your darlings. Yes. yes. You're my angels. It must be a handful. I mean, handling three princesses like this. Yeah. How, old are, how old are they? There will be three this month and then. Three okay. in this so month? First, the yeah. month the of May. First. Wow. Fantastic. So, Look, what's the story? Yes. Whew. Um, the story began like, I found out I was pregnant and um, I think three months time I took the first scan and then I got to know there were three. Actually, since I was young, I've been crazy about multiple babies and my uh -huh. father too was a twin, so I used to brag about it that I'll have multiple babies. Okay. So when I found that, actually, before going for the scan, I wasn't expecting to be told it was one baby I was carrying. Mm -hmm. You knew at least two? I just knew it wasn't one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So when I found out there were three, two, throughout the night, I was like, God, there should have been four. Hey, you want to oh, go? Yes. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. Really? There should have been four. So from, from around... 15 weeks, then I got to know I was going to do everything by myself without the support of anyone. Why? Why? Because the father wasn't around. And then... If you say he wasn't around, um, he didn't take responsibility or he, he was out that of That aspect in particular, I don't want to go much into details about it, but mm. around 15 weeks, I got to know I was going to do it all alone. He said he wasn't interested, that what he said. I don't want to. You want to even yeah. go there. So you, you knew that from week 15, you're on your own, baby. Yes. How, how did that change your thinking? Because I don't think you expected <laughs> to be running this show by no, yourself. No, what, what? How did that change your whole outlook to life? It did change my life a lot because um, all I had to depend on was my work. And I couldn't work. I couldn't even sit like... The early stages of the pregnancy, I couldn't do anything. Even after taking in water, I have to lie down. Mm. It was that bad and vomiting blood here yeah, and like it was it was really difficult serious. pregnancy? Yeah. Yes. I couldn't work throughout the pregnancy. So And you were still was, a fashion designer then? I was. So what people you were calling me for, for a job but I couldn't do it. Mm. Even though I needed the money badly, but I just couldn't work. You couldn't draw nothing to do it. Actually, I'm not a good sketcher. Mm. I can't sketch. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. some of the designers, it, there are some people who sketch, but they can't sew. Mm. And some people too, they can sew, but, but they, they can't can sketch. sketch. Yeah, so you yeah do. unfortunately, I don't sketch. So, you sew. Okay. so yeah. So. Yes, so, so what? Um, that changed your whole... Yeah, you know, I had to be begging around to feed myself and to buy medication and Tell stuff. us more about, about it. If you say begging around. Yeah, calling What happened on, to family? On where, where, where are your parents, first of all? They Any are in, siblings? My father passed away um, after having them, actually. But he was an old man. He passed away when he was 88. 88, okay. Yes, and I'm his firstborn, so... Wow. Uh, Actually, I'm the one to be sending him something, not taking something from mm -hmm. him. So I couldn't really call on him. And not that he had any, he wouldn't give me. And then I was calling on friends here and there, asking them for help. Was and it easy was, to ask people for help? It's not easy. It's not easy at all. There are some people you know, they will not even answer your call, but you have no choice. You have to call and see if they will, they will answer your so fast forward, um, thankfully you went through 40 weeks mm -hmm. and then... It was 36 You did 36. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then 
these lovely ones came up. Yeah. And then what happened? Was it a CS? It was by CS and the CS itself. Like CS, after a few hours, you'll be taken back to the world. I went mm. to the theater on Friday. Mm. When I opened my eyes, it was on Sunday. Wow. Yes. I had, uh, after the CS, I had complication. I went for two extra more operation within 48 hours. Wow. And I wasn't even aware of the second one. When I opened my eyes on Sunday morning, very early on Sunday morning, the pain that I was in, then they realized they had to take me back to the theater. So at that time, I thought I was having the second operation. Not only that was the third one. I wasn't aware of the second one. Wow. So, you know, I spent five days in the ICU, and I spent um, one month in total at the hospital. Actually, I want to take this opportunity to thank uh, Dr. Karim, Dr. Bonsafo of uh, Kolebu Teaching Hospital. So. I was going to ask, so and, what? And uh, Dr. Nabi of Lighthouse Clinic. Okay. Um, so how was the funding done? Is that the reason why you are thanking these doctors? How did you find money to pay for all of this? Uh, a neighbor of mine, a neighbor of mine helped and... A few church members also came to visit me at the hospital and they, like, support here and there, then you put it together and... Wow. Right up. And the babies so, came? Yes. Describe the day you saw your babies. <laughs> uh, that was... The first time that I saw one was in the ICU when I opened my eyes. I was in a severe pain, but I could... I could hear them crying and the nurses were like, Hey, they just triplet. They will not sleep. They will cry throughout. So... I was like eager to, to see them and I called one nurse to, to bring the one crying to me and she said, you yourself, you can't even open your eyes <laughs> well and you want your baby. So yeah. she brought one close to me that maybe she, when she's lying by myself, my side, she will stop the crying and mm. that was the first time I saw one's face and I was happy to see her. Did that take away all the pain? No, the pain that I went through. I thank God that sex things, you can talk about it, but you don't really feel the pain. It, mm. was, it was terrible, my sister. It mm. was really, really, really tough. Right? I never thought I could even survive it. Really? Yeah. So how, how have you managed to do it then? Um, I would say it's by the grace of God. Because um, since they were six months, I was left alone with them. My mother used to come around before they were six months, and uh, I had a house help too. Mm -hmm. After um, the house help left, that was when they were five months, and my mother left around when they were six. Mm -hmm. The idea was for her to go back to her hometown and she'll bring someone to come and help me, but mm -hmm. she searched and she couldn't find anyone. So from when they were six months to date, I've been alone with them. Wow. It's, yes. It's, uh, I'm just wondering how you combine your, your job as a fashion designer mm -hmm. with handling these kids. But before even that question, I'm wondering, well, with, with twins, if they're all hungry at the same time, you can just carry them and I'm sure do your double breastfeeding. <laughs> if all three of them are hungry, what happens? The thing is with multiple babies, even when they are two, you are allowed to add the formula. Mm. You don't go straightly by the, the breast milk. Mm. So the formula helped. Okay. Just that it was a, a heavy cost on me, but it, it helped. Who I, I, th I think your question was, if indeed they were all kind of, you know, hungry and you had to feed them, and since you were alone, okay. how did you, how do, did you it? do that? I remember in the hospital, I wasn't allowed to have any visitor around me in the night. So, and they were not sleeping at night too. And my legs were so swollen that even when they are sleeping, I can't sleep on the bed myself. I'll have to get an assistant to carry my, my legs on the bed before. Mm. So when they are crying, I'll just uh, put them on the bed on their sides, two of them, and I'll be feeding them with a bottle. Whilst one is crying, but I have no choice. I have to feed the two, mm. and after that, I'll feed the third one. Mm. So, huh? How do you do this? I mean, they are so well behaved, mm. very ladylike, <laughs> you know, just, just I... cool and calm. <laughs> is there something you're doing right that we can all learn from? Please, especially me. <laughs> okay. My son is their age. And if he was here, the whole place would have been turned mm. upside down. Trust me. The thing and is that um, children come into our lives mm -hmm. without they knowing anything. Indeed. If you don't help in directing them where they should go, mm -hmm. they will direct you where you should go. Mm -hmm. So you have to be firm on your grounds and be disciplined. Mm -hmm.
that one you don't have to so how are you firm and how, how, how do you like if if you are touching it? this and I, I don't want you to touch it i have to ensure that you don't touch it In what way like what is it? stop don't touch it i will insist i won't just say don't touch it and be doing something else mm. i will ensure spank? not often mm. not mm. often but if they can touch it and i'll say stop they will not take it serious, but they know the sound that means they should really stop. From the tone mm. of your voice? Yes. Okay. I, 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 look. Not to scream on them or anything, but they know when I, I mean they should really stop. Indeed, I get that part. Mm -hmm. But I remember initially my son didn't used to, you know, be like that mm -hmm. as well. Um, and I, I remember when I spoke with the pediatrician, he was like, listen, if he doesn't behave the way he's behaving, you think he's not normal. <laughs> you know, you know, in Ghana we say terrible too. Mm. In the US they say terrific too. This mm. is a stage where you expect them to do, you know, all the running around, touching stuff. They want to know what is it. Why does mommy not want me to go there? Why does daddy not want me to touch that? You know? Yeah, so I'm you start you're blessed. You, you, amen. <laughs> you start before they get to this stage. You don't wait till this stage before you insist that you don't have to type this or that. So very early. Oh. Yes, very early. Listen, I, 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 before I came in, I was, I was asking you, I mean, how you can tell them apart. They look really identical to me. Too and much. So this is Nani yes. Fwa. Yes. Mami Fwa. Fwa. What kind of personalities do they have? They all look very calm, but is mm -hmm. one like, say, a boss? The, the is boss like, is the last one, Nani Fwa. This is the boss, eh? <laughs> okay, how does she, she boss her she, sisters she, around? She, she's our boss, actually. Um, yeah. I've taught them, like, when they offend themselves, the person who offends their sister should say sorry. Okay. And when I'm not in their room, a refer will insist that the person who offends their sister should say sorry. She will say it? Say yes. Sorry. Say sorry. She will insist. <laughs> so you, she's the enforcer? Will, yes. Okay, the middle one is, uh, is Mami. Ma yes, Mami. What kind of mommy, personality has Mami is uh, kind of calm a bit, and Nanifa is a little like a refer. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Do they really do they get angry? <laughs> no, it's it's a refer. The boss. Yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. What, what what gets her to be angry? Almost everything. Mm, yeah. That that's how she is. She gets frustrated mm -hmm. by everything. Yeah. Do you deal with like, tantrums? I mean, uh, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to eat. I don't want to. Uh, no. no. You don't get that. No. Is this something you're it's, feeding it's, them or not feeding them? It's not allowed. Look, like, I heard that sugary drinks sometimes can make kids them hyper. hyperactive, and this, mm. this literature. I don't, I, they've never I taken see, candy before. They've, they've never, they've never they taken take, candy. No, never. Not even once. No candy. No. No sweets. No, no toffees. No. No. Okay. And uh, they've taken soda just once. They couldn't even take it well because that was their first time. They're not used to it. Yes. So no soft drinks, no candy. No. So what do they feed on? Um, like uh, soda cracker. Mm -hmm. uh, if it's drink too, then uh, Vitamilk. Mm -hmm. I know there's sugar in there, but it's not as, it's not as much. sugary okay. as okay. the, the So now, sodas. I'm guessing uh, you resumed your work as a fashion mm -hmm. designer. Yes. How do you operate? Where do you work from? Do you leave them with somebody and go and work, or do you work from home? I work from home. I work from home. They're about to start school, so um, I'm, I'm beginning to really go into work now. And uh, I even plan on training people, and I'll be starting on 1st of next month. So I hope whoever is interested can get in touch with me on Facebook. It's uh, three months intensive mm -hmm. uh, training. Mm -hmm. I know you're so bent on giving them the best. Yes. Uh, are we raising enough money from what you do now to, to, to give them that kind of quality care that you're looking for? I would say no, but I try my best for them. So they're in school, I suppose? Not but yet. Not yet. yet. Do, do you want, sometimes wonder whether they will be missing a father figure? Do you think about that? No. No. I know that will help them, but since they don't have that, I can't force it. Mm. But I know for sure they are happy. But maybe, maybe one day the boss will come and say, look, mommy, uh, we want to see daddy. What would be your response? But if, if you are happy, why would you... No, it's a natural thing. They, they may go to school and see that, children. okay, uh, people, fathers and mothers are coming to pick up their friends, and they may start asking questions, because this whole school thing may open a whole new way of life for them. Have you thought about, about yeah. that? Yeah, we we'll cross that bridge when you get there. So, okay. all right. Well, um, I, I guess if you just joined us, um, you're loving us. 
<laughs> We've been joined by some three beautiful co-hosts, very pretty. And uh, their mm. mother is here, Johan Wilson. She's a fashion designer, a single mother. And she's sharing with us her story of exactly how she's doing it, how she's trying to overcome the challenges to give these future leaders, you never know, for all you know, one of them might become the first president of our country, you know, how she can give them the best, you know, of care. So, Johan, let's look at, should they now begin school? Mm -hmm. Should they now begin school? Uh, and all of these challenges that we're talking about come up. How would you deal with it? And by this, I'm looking at some single mother out there who finds themselves in your position. What would be your advice to them? Definitely, you may have a, a, a male cousin or a friend that you can really call on to, to play that role in their lives as... It still as, will not be the same. Yeah, but what will you do? It's something you wish your kids have, but you don't have it, so mm. what will you do? Mm. It's not as if their, their father is like no more. I think the question the coffee mm. asks, and even if it doesn't happen around this time, as mm. they grow, and we've seen, you know, Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm young and as I'm hoping to meet someone then. Okay. And then you would yeah. probably introduce okay, so, that yes, person as yes. that. Okay. okay, so okay. that chapter in your life is closed. Yeah. You're not even going there. Yeah. But has he reached out to you, by the way? Since you gave birth and you've been looking after the children, has he made any moves to say, hey, hi, how are you doing, things like that? No. At all? Okay, we'll leave it there. Uh, I'm just curious now. I'm wondering whether you have to think in threes every time you're, uh -huh. <laughs> you're buying shoes and socks. <laughs> and, so it's always course, threes. Yes. Okay. And uh, how, how, do they, how do you do they sleep? In their own room or they're with you on the big bed? They're, they are with me. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. There's one big bed, all of you. <laughs> yes. Oh, and wow. even Erefua will not sleep without me. I have to, she has to be by my side or on top of me. Okay, so she's the, the last one? Yes. So the, that's probably like your senior prefect. Yeah. You keep the others in check. <laughs> you know how that they, you know, they talk about um, sometimes allowing them to be by themselves so they become independent. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about that? As in, actually, most of the time they are on their own when we are home. Mm. Okay. Because uh, our bedroom is kind of their playroom. Mm. They have everything in there. Mm. And I'll be working or something. So mm. I check on them whilst I hear someone crying or something. Mm. I'll become a, a professional referee. I have to mm. <laughs> go and settle the difference, whatever is going on with them. And Okay. Yeah. Well, now that you talk about, sorry, Kaf, no, but now that you talk about it, um, Playroom, your mm -hmm. bedroom being the playroom. What is like their favorite game? Um, favorite Ira, game. <laughs> yeah, Ira, what's your favorite game? What's your favorite game? <laughs> She's more interested in the studio know, right? <laughs> and the giraffe <laughs> looking at moving the giraffe all around the, the place. place. So listen, um, in terms of support, like um, family or, do you get that? No. Are family not excited about about this? Uh, but how, how does society uh, <laughs> treat single mothers, especially one with so many little kids? About I mean, for me, my case has been um, I have some family members or friends or people that are are rich enough to support me. Mm -hmm. But I think I don't know whether it's enviness or mm -hmm. jealousy or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like some of them are my relative, not mm -hmm. even a text message to. Mm -hmm. to ask how you guys are doing and mm -hmm. when you call on them to they will just not mind have you cut them off not really but the point is if i come to you mm -hmm. what what will you be able to do for me mm -hmm. and you know my situation mm -hmm. so if i'll be calling you just to check up on you and you can't do that for me or to say i'll send you one cd every man to support you with then what's the point yeah so do you regret being a single mother no way no way i don't regret at all if if for their well-being i will be a single mother for the rest of my life i don't i don't really care all i want is for them to be happy so, so apart from what you do now what is the plan is there a bigger picture yeah, the bigger picture is to go more into training people now. Mm. Okay, you mentioned yes. that. Set up a yes. school or something. Yes. All right. Because I know there are some single, mother, uh, single mothers who are home, but the kids are in school now, mm. but they don't really have any meaningful job or the job that they are doing, they are not really like time factor and all that. So this one is 
three months and it's very intensive. Mm -hmm. After the three months, you'll be able to cut and to sew on your own and okay. I think that, that will help you in every corner that you have because right. if not for my job that I do mm. I don't think I would have survived so you, you mm. re definitely call for young women to be independent of course mm -hmm. of course mm. because my work has really helped me a lot okay all well, right I, I, I want you to briefly tell us um, what should be the role of that single mother in bringing up children like this the role should be that it's not anyone's, I don't think anyone will step out to wish that she wants to be a single mother, but it has happened to you. What mm. will you do? You, okay. the mother, you have to try your best okay. to call on God to give you the strength to be there for your children. All right. At all costs. Okay. At all costs. That's it. Yeah. And, but the future is bright? Of course. The future is bright. Mm. Johan Wilson mm -hmm. with Nanifwa. Nanifwa. Mamifwa. Area and area for the boss. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. Enjoy the story. And young ladies, can you say bye bye to the uncle there? Can you say bye bye? Bye bye. Say bye bye. bye, -bye. Say bye, -bye. Say bye, -bye. Look into this. Place. <laughs> say bye bye. Okay, so coming up next is uh, these are really, these are ladies, man. Serious <laughs> ladies. World in 60 seconds and then <laughs> NX with AJ. They're what so sweet pretty. ladies. So pretty. Okay. Bye. Oh.